We're going to review this Clarion. It's an NZ503. This is a brand new model. It just hit. Um, actually, it's so new. Clarion didn't even want people like me to even get it yet. They, they just want it to be strictly sold to people like Crutchfield and people like that, I guess, for the meantime. But I did manage to get a bunch, and I'm going to review it before they take them back from me. So right here, as I usually do, I usually show you the outside. Um, then I open it up and get into the full demo. But this here is what she looks like in the front. Um, LCD display there. The front face is not detachable, by the way. Um, it is laid out pretty nice. It does have the multicolor option, so you can change this around a bit. I'll open it up for you real fast. And there is your main tuner screen. And you'll notice this is pretty much just like the predecessor, which was the NZ502. There are a few changes, and I'll explain them all to you. So, there's your outside manual. That there's my iPhone. I'm going to use to demo some of the features. The remote, exactly as it was in 2012. Nothing new there. This here is the auxiliary aux cable. Analog AV input, which goes on the front right, right there. Let's spin this bad boy around. Now, back here, you can see the antenna. It's exactly the same as it was last year. Nothing's changed, so if you're upgrading, you can simply unplug yours and plug this right in. Nothing will change. Right over here, standard 16-pin harness. Uh, this one here has got 19 watts RMS by four channels. Um, over here, this here is the uh, USB pigtail. They give you about... Uh, looks like around two feet or so, maybe a little bit more. I'm not really sure exactly, but it's around there. And one of the highlights of this unit with me always is this kind of stuff. So let me show you what we got here. You got dual audio video inputs. You also have a, a, um, a steering wheel interface and an external microphone input if you don't want to utilize the one that's built right into the face of the unit. Um, that's your AV1. This is your steering wheel interface. Plug it right in there. You got your front, rear, and sub RCA preamp outputs. By the way, they are 4 volt outputs. HD radio input, which is an option. We got the THD401 for that. Well, the THD400 will work, I guess. Sirius XM tuner, which would be the V200. That's what you'd get to get, add the Sirius onto there. The USB um, antenna, nothing really going on there. Built-in fan does come with this trim ring. It also comes with this sleeve as well as two removal keys. Should you want to take it out, you got a couple of those guys. You got your hardware pack. So if you're going to ISO mount the unit, you have the side screws. Um, these little T-tap connectors, which I hate, but I guess they mean for you to use that to tap onto your parking brake. Okay, so let's get to how this thing works. All right, so here we're on the home screen. I'm just going to let this thing kind of go through its little demo mode, and I'm going to do some chitter-chatter in the background before I start interacting with the unit. Um, some noteworthy things that are worth talking about. 7-inch um, screen. Pretty straightforward, nothing going on there. Um, all the other specs that I've noticed uh, mirror the NX, I'm sorry, the NZ502 from last year of 2012. So if you haven't already seen it and you want to have even more information that you're not going to get from this review, which I doubt because I'm pretty thorough, um, I also did a review on last year's models. So most of that stuff is going to carry right over to here because basically the 503 series is the 502 series or the 702 series or the 602 series for that matter um, just with some small enhancements because I did not notice an overwhelming amount of changes from last year and I'm very familiar with these Clarion models so with this guy right here you got a 7 inch of course the CD slot which is located right in here Let's just bring that down a little for you She's located right down there. Um, that will actually accept a DVD, CD, MP3, uh, AAC, and an MP4 playback if anybody actually uses that. 
Just bring this right back where I want it. Perfect. Okay. So um, it has a built-in Bluetooth interface, which is manufactured and licensed from Parrot. So at least you know you're going to have a good, reliable, quality Bluetooth with this unit. And um, that's a good thing. This unit also has a built-in microphone. The microphone is built right into the front of this unit. If you have the kind of vehicle where your dash is extremely far away or it's hard to hear or, or speak to the other person, you can get the optional RCB199, which is just a regular standard mic that Clarion makes, or basically any 3.5 millimeter mic, in my opinion, would work just as well. You can plug it into the rear of the unit and extend it and mount it wherever you want it to be. I did already touch on the front 3.5 millimeter input, which is on the face of the radio. Um, I personally would not see myself using it, but, you know, maybe you would. It does have dual zone capability. What that means is that you can actually toggle your front and rear sources with the touch of a button. So you could have the rear passengers uh, doing, say, a DVD movie, and the front could be doing satellite radio, HD radio, AM FM tuner, and have GPS going on simultaneously, which will interrupt so you, in essence, would have three zones going on simultaneously. Okay, as well as that, this thing is very Pandora uh, compatible. It has a station link with the USB, or you can use the Pandora app. It has a rear view camera, composite RCA video input. It has the built-in iGo Primo mapping system. And there's 15 million points of interest for anybody who's interested in knowing that. That's a lot. I think that's just about as much as you're going to locate anywhere in the aftermarket this right now. Um, they are preloaded onto a micro SD card. The micro SD card is located right up in here in the top left section on the side of the panel. So you can remove it and you can also do updates through that card. That's how that's done. So aside from that, this thing has Texas speech for street announcements. Multi-language capability, it can do English, Spanish, Spanish, and French. The um, iTunes does the tagging. You got the 50 watts peak and you got the 19 RMS like I was explaining. Six channels on your front, rear, and sub. Dedicated subwoofer output. Um, it has a high and a low pass filter. It does not have a band pass filter, however. Um, it has some built-in EQs for sound adjustment, but, you know, we like custom adjustments here. The steering wheel interface is ready, which I showed you in the back. It's that little pigtail there. It does have the remote, which I already showed you. Let's see what else we have here. The HD radio I won't go into because it's sold separately. It's an option. And I like to tell you what you're actually going to get with the unit. If you wanted to see more about how the HD radio works, um, I suggest that you actually go on the Clarion site or look at some other review that's just on that specific thing. Me personally, I just am a big fan of satellite radio. Uh, I have no need to listen to digital commercials, but if you do, you know, knock yourself out. So now we're on the home screen. This unit is designed to basically work just like a, a phone. So when you do a lot of sw swipe motions and stuff like this, you're going to really be very impressed with this unit because it's very, very good like that. I can definitely tell you that. Now... I just want to hit that home screen real quick. Um, on here, let's start from the start. Um, GPS will lead to later. Telephone, I don't have a, a phone paired. I do have my iPhone plugged in, but I'm just going to use that for just, uh, you know, audio, nothing else. But you can see if there was a device that would be paired, this unit will learn up to four. Um, and it will automatically recognize any one of those four. These buttons would, of course, not be grayed out. And you, you actually use this to make your calls. And over here, it has your dialed, received, missed, contacts. You can bring your whole phone book and port it into this unit. Call with a touch of a button. This unit does not support voice recognition. Not that many voice recognitions I've ever seen even work that well. So um, no boo-hoo on that one. And over here, this is how you can do your pairing for your, for your pin, auto-connect, auto-answer, Mic, you can switch it for the internal or external. Also adjust the mic gain, which is very cool. And it gives you the hardware version. So it's a lot of robust information. A lot of stuff that a lot of manufacturers never show anybody, for that matter. So that's a big, that's a big deal. I like that. Bluetooth audio, very straightforward. Turn your phone on. And, um, I mean, 
this unit will actually know the artist and the track. I mean, me personally, in my own car, it doesn't. I mean, it, all it knows is that it's playing a song. Um, sometimes, depending on how it was encoded from when I do my bootleg, bootleg down, downloads or whatever, sometimes I might get lucky, but most of the time I don't. This unit actually does, so I'm going so to guess that the Bluetooth software in this unit is superior to what I'm using myself. So... That's pretty good for Clarion. That's a good thing. We already seen that. Let's get on out of there. So like I said, GPS we're going to come back to. Phone we showed you. Bluetooth audio. Really liking the Bluetooth audio. Tuner we're not going to waste a lot of time on. But there it is. Now you could do this with your finger and do the swipe thing. Or you could just go through here. Um, you can have your presets. So you have 6 for your uh, FM and you have 6 for your AM. And up on the top, not that I can show you because this camera is kind of zoomed in, but there's a button there for your band. So you notice that you're on FM2, FM3, AM, and it'll go back to FM1. So you got a total of 18 presets for your FM and you got 6 for AM because nobody listens to AM. At least nobody that watches my videos does. Um, the close and open button is also located on the top. And also, there's a button, and I think it's really worth showing you. Let me just reposition the camera. Um, right up here, there's a button which you can use to toggle the GPS and the AV source. So if you hit that, you're going to get your mapping. Hit it again, you're on your AV. So that's a quick, quick button to get from one mode to the other, and I think that that's very noteworthy. That's why I wanted to take my time and show you that. Also, the close and open button... You can see that the motor is very sturdy. The screen doesn't have any kind of play in it. Um, you know, I'm trying to move it around and aggravate it. It's not working. So that's a good thing. We're liking that. So there's your tuner. Let's get out of here because, you know, it's a tuner. Your satellite radio, I don't have one connected, nor would I get it anyway because I'm in a warehouse with a metal roof. But all your, all your channels, all your information is going to be up on here. you got your channels, presets, categories. Um, you could do a direct input, so you could put in the actual channel number that you wanted to get. You could add them, delete them. You could add presets. Um, so this is looking really good. The colors are very nice. It's laid out very well. Lots of lines, as you can see here, for lots of information. So when you want to know what you're watching, there's no shortage of information on this screen. So that's another good thing. So, so far, this review is going really well for this Clarion. Now, Pandora. Um... Hopefully you know what Pandora is. What it is is kind of just a, a like a Netflix for audio, really, is all it is. Um, and once you have it on your phone, you tap the, the app on the screen, and then you're in business. It works just like an iPod. Very straightforward to use. Um, so I'm sure anybody who uses the feature has a good clue of what's going on. Now here's your disc, which there's nothing on there, so that it actually won't even recognize. That's pretty good. That's, that tells me that this is an intelligent unit when it knows that something's there or not. USB audio, not happening. However, iPod audio, it knows my phone is connected. So I showed you that before. There it is. I'm going to cut it on. I can see that the radio is trying to talk to my phone. So basically this is mirroring what I'm seeing on my screen, on my phone. So there you go. There's your artist, your title, your song, and your genre. Pretty good, huh? Now over here, you got playlists, artists, songs, albums, and a down button. You got a button for podcasts, audiobooks, composers, and genres. Not in the pre uh, preceding model. This is new. So I'm really liking that. So there's more information. Soul of Squeeze, um, Chili Peppers is the album, rock. I mean, we're good, man. So let's just say if we wanted to find a song by uh, Pink Floyd, there's artists. You can do one of these dealies, or you can go this way, super fast. I mean, whoa, hang on. L-M-N-O-P. Oops. Pink Floyd, there's all your stuff. There you go. Look at that. Scrolling text. No artwork. That's my fault because my phone doesn't didn't pick up the artwork for whatever reason. But... You see how fast that was. You can fast forward and rewind. 
do your pause, there's your shuffle, and all that other stuff that you expect to see. Um, you can change the control to simple control, or you can make it more advanced, depending on how you want it to be. So basically now, I can just go to my iPod, hit that, and it's actually controlling it. So again, I'm really liking that. So iPod is there. There's also supporting for iPod video as well as the audio section. Everything else on the screen we have covered. We're moving along. You got auxiliary one, auxiliary two, dedicated rear view camera input, which you can override and look at it anytime you want. Or of course, if you hardwire it into your reverse lead of your, um, your, your vehicle, it'll cut the screen on. The only thing I don't like about that is it usually takes a second. It's about a one, one and a half second lag between the actual shifting of the gear to the image coming on the screen. But, you know, hey, what do you want? Nothing's perfect. Um, there's your video, your USB video, iPod video. I don't think there's any videos on my iPod, but if there is, I'm going to find out right now. Oh, you won't let me do it. I did not do the parking brake bypass. That's also, I know a million people are going to ask about the, the video bypass. I'm mm, try to get to a video bypass. These Clarions are a little tricky when it comes to the video bypass. They like to like see that the Clarions actually, when you want to watch a DVD while the vehicle's on, they like to see the parking brake be on, go off, and then come back on. I mean, there's... Of course, an easy way to get around that if you want to be bothered by tying the e-brake wire into the uh, tuner wire with a relay. So that way you'd have to hit the tuner and then go back to your DVD. But that's kind of annoying. You could, of course, buy like a TR7 or some other module to make that problem go away. But for now, that's another story. Another day, another video. Not getting into it. So we've done everything. The only thing that's left is the GPS. This is that iGo software, by the way, folks, for the uh, mapping. This is not Navtech or any of those other companies. This is a different kind of a deal. And actually, it's picking up satellites from inside this warehouse, which is pretty damn good. That is where I am, Old Dixie Highway here in Florida. So, this little tile icon is always up there. It's a nice little reference button, so you can cancel it. You can see where you're at. You can change some of your settings add a pit stop onto your route, things like that, which is nice. Also, this has, it'll tell you the speed, which you can change into kilometers, miles, and all that kind of stuff. It has speed limit um, notifications, which I personally find to be annoying because I speed. Um, that tells you if you're going over the speed limit. It also tells you a lot of times on the screen what the speed limit is. I also find as a negative to Clarion is that a lot of times those speed limits are inaccurate. So if Clarion's watching, yeah, I might want to fix that. Your clock, which is there, which is cool. Um, there's your GPS. Not too bad, huh? Lots of information. Now in the menu, which is where you're going to do most anything, is you're going to always use this button, find. So you can use, of course, an address. I don't think I'm going to bore you with that, but this is what it looks like. It already knows I'm in Florida. You don't have to put that in. All you do is put your name in, the house number. It literally takes like three seconds to find anything. This is the way I normally do things, and I think this is the best-selling feature of this unit, is the telephone address book. This thing, you just put in a phone number. Of course, it has to be a business phone number. It does not work with residential people. Um, if you need to find a place and you're too lazy or you forgot the address or a part of the address, phone number works just fine and it works tremendously well. I know that from experience. So that's a cool feature. It's not something you find on just anything out there either. Um, find on map. The finding on map feature, it's okay. Um, I mean, a lot of these units have this feature. I personally frown on it. I've never had a lot of success using it. I don't know if it's because of my own inability. Um, it's definitely not because of lack of experience because I've been doing this for God knows how many, how long now. Um, but hey, I mean, if you want to do this kind of thing and find something on the map, you know, do what you got to do. It's there. If you want it, it's there. Your coordinates, which again, I would never use. I would use either the phone number or the find a place. So let's just say if I wanted to go to a, um, 
uh, let's see, an airport. Um, no, I don't want that. Let's do that. So let's say A I R P O R T. And get some results. Yeah, that works for me. St. Augustine Airports. Now you could filter this as well. Uh, say I want to know, go to Jacksonville Airport. Ooh, you don't know that, huh? Let's try spelling it out. There we go. Jacksonville Airport. International Airport. Boom. See how long it takes. I don't think that that's typical. I think that's because we're low on satellites, so nothing bad on this unit. That's how long it took to plan the route. It took, what, three-tenths of a second? You're good. So there you are. That's where you're going. Now, you could change um, a lot of these variables. What kind of vehicle you have, how fast you want to go. If you want to do ferries, avoid ferries, um, toll roads, all that kind of nonsense. Um, it's right there. So it's 38 miles from here, how long it takes, there's your arrival time, just get up and go, it, she'll start talking to you, you can customize who's talking to you, how often they talk to you, the GPS is good. And I know that there was a bug with this GPS last year, I, and I'm fairly sure, I mean I only have limited insider information, you know, like most people, I don't work at Clarion, but it looks like they got that bug taken care of, because there was a little bug which made the unit reset. Which, which affected all the last year's models, specifically the NX 602, 702, and I believe it would be the NX 502 because it's basically the same thing as the uh, NX Double Din series. So there's that. Your My Roots, it'll save all your stuff that you've already done. Um, so it's very quick to reference and go to do new, new spots that you're going to hit. So that's cool. Um, these are all your. Ah, uh, gee whiz, there's so, just so much stuff to go into here. Um, if you wanted to edit your route, um, you could do that. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff you could do in here. Um, you also got your economy. You could, you could figure out your gas mileage. Um, this unit also even has a calculator built into it. I mean, it's, there's just so much stuff that you could do. It's just endless. Um, but let's not get crazy. There's your map. It also has the nice 3D imagery with the buildings and stuff like that. It's got that hybrid, crazy-looking GPS. So if you're really into like seeing a little light show, this is a good unit for you. Very easy on the eye. Screen's very reactive, very bright, lots of pixel, good good nit rate. I like a lot about the the screen. is very good. The contrast, excellent. Um, the quality seems perfect. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of bad things to say about Clarion. I mean, except for, you know, me nitpicking on the flaws with the um, speed limits. You know, maybe it's a little laggy from getting from one thing to another, but every unit's going to have something. So overall, this Clarion looks like a pretty darn winner chicken dinner for me. So that's it, people. There's your NZ503.